If you're an advanced Photoshopper, this week's tutorial is not the tutorial for you. It's all about a simple design in Photoshop. So hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me again on Facebook at Rita Pro. Don't worry, yes, you can even personal message me on Facebook, so just go ahead and click away. Anyways guys, this tutorial is not advanced, so if you're an advanced Photoshopper, this is not the tutorial for you. Come back next week. Again, guys, you, if you're a beginner, this tutorial is for you. It's super simple, one or two different fonts. We're going to work with the marking tool and also some shapes, which you can download down below in the description for free. And yeah, enough of the talking. Let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so in Photoshop, this week I'm going to show you guys a super simple design again. This is not a vintage logo, it's just called vintage. But anyways, let's get right away into it. First of all, I'm going to show you guys the background over here. Again, super simple. As with every tutorial almost, I have a black layer because my logo is mainly black and I want a white font to stand out. So that's why my first layer is completely black. Then on top of that, I obviously have a little bit of a design here. Just a very cool old looking machine. I also took down the opacity, it used to be like this. If you want to have this image, have a look down below in the description is a link to my website where you can download for free the Tronix Design Media Package which holds this um, background as well. Great, so I took this in, it's a little bit blue, a little purple in there, so I added another hue and saturation adjustment layer and just took the saturation all the way down to minus 100, as you guys can see. And as well, I also took the lightness here up to plus five. So it's just a bit lighter and gives me that faded look. I did not work with any adjustment layers with levels. So literally just with the lightness over here. Great, that was all for the background. Let's get right away into the design. So first of all, again, like usually text tool, I'm gonna select the text, make a nice big text here. And this can be any name guys. I'm just gonna go with the vintage today since I see a lot of designers use vintage as their main name. Again, vintage over here, all in capital letters. I'm gonna first of all choose the right font for that. And this will be today something called Nexa, Nexa Bolt, there we go. Okay, let's maybe just select our font as well. Okay, this I need to do this way. Let's try that again. And I'm just gonna make this nice and big. Nexa Bolt, there we go. Okay, select all of it. First of all, the size, that will be something around 70. Try that, 73. Okay, nice and big. But the spacing, I don't like that. I would like to actually move the tracking down a little bit. If you don't have this character box, simply go to Window and set a character box over here in order for you to get into the tracking format. Okay, and I'm going to go with like something, yeah, not too much, maybe minus 80. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm going to accept it. Move it somewhere into the center. I'm not sure what it is right now. That's why we're going to go back to View, New Guide, and over here, Horizontally, we're going to select that, 50%. All of you guys know that. If you keep on watching every week, you know about this. But if you're new, have a look. Again, also on the channel is a one-on-one -on -one Photoshop playlist for beginner where you can learn how to work with guidelines, canvases, shapes, brushes, all of that cool stuff. Okay, let's make the vintage logo somewhere into the center here. I'm gonna go back to view once more, new guide, and say vertical the same, so I'm really sure I've got the center. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, great. Next step that I want to do is also take the text tool once again, make a little selection over here, and this might be now something very retro, something like retro brand, badge, that will be my name, but it can be for you some slogan again, or something simple that you want to add. So again, retro badges, let's try if that comes out. You guys can't see it right now because it's way too big. Let's make it just a bit smaller. Retro. Yep. Something weird here. Badges. Okay. Now I do want to select a different font for this. Select select all. I'm going to go over here and select a font called Hirmokas. Yeah, is that right? I'm not sure. You guys can find that down below in the description. I've added it for you as well. Then 18 pixels. And I can right away see that the font is not looking nice in a capital letters. So just retype that again. Okay, let's just select the top part. We're going to select 18 for font size. And then at the bottom, retro badges. 
Oh, badge. Badges is also good. And my tracking is completely broken here. So let's switch this back to zero. Yep, and that looks a bit nicer. Okay, I'm going to accept that. And just with the move tool, move that somewhere over here. Okay, so I want to give it a bit of a mix from a straight up front with just like a handwritten font. Okay, select both vintage and retro badge on your layer palette here. We can actually move that to the top. And let's just move this up a little bit. So it's still in the center. Okay, great. And now I'm going to work just with some simple lines. Very, very simple. So go for that. Go over to the rectangular marking tool. You can first of all take with the move tool actually. Just move out some guidelines here. And I'm going to put one over here, so there where my text ends, the font, and over here where it also ends. And now, again, make a selection with the rectangular marking tool, something like so. You can also decide on the thickness that you want for this. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Next step, I'm going to go and create a new layer here. And inside of this selection now, I'm just going to zoom in with the marking tool. So just hit M on the keyboard again. I'm going to hit right click inside of that selection. Say fill and fill this up again with white color or whatever color you choose to take with your font and also the text. Okay, I'm going to zoom out and I'm also going to press command D. I'm working with a Mac, so if you're a Windows person, please press control when I say command. So command D for me, for Windows, control D. Okay, next step that I want to do, maybe go to view, clear the guide so I just get a better feeling of my design so far. Again, the thickness of the line, I'm happy with that. Otherwise, I would have created another marking tool, um, another selection here actually with the marking tool and just deleted a little bit from this line over here. It's super simple. Just make another selection over here. Move that with the marking tool over, hit delete and you delete that other space. Okay, for me now, I'm going to move that down a little bit like so. Okay, a little up just with the cursors up and down. Okay, and then what I want to do is go to my shape library over here, custom shape tool, go to the shape library. And again, you guys can see I've got a ton of shapes. If you want to have all my shapes, they are for free. Just check down below in the description. There's a Tronix Design Media package where you can download all of these shapes for free. Yes, all of them. Okay, I'm looking for the star over here. Okay, and I'm literally have the star. I'm going to first in the application bar, switch this to white foreground color. And it will most probably create a new layer now once I start working with it. So simply hold shift on the keyboard so it's equally expanding. And I'm just going to make a little star over here. The size will just be like this. Yeah, happy with that. Again, let's go to view, new guide again. I know I shouldn't delete them, but sometimes it's just a bit easier to see what I'm designing. Okay, so my first star should be somewhere in the center. Just with my cursors and I'm also going to place it right over here over the line like so. Now I'm going to press Command J to duplicate this. So again, Windows people, Control J. Okay, and keep with your Move tool, just left and right. Okay, you can also hold Shift inside and then with the cursors go left and right so these things jump a bit quicker. Then the first shape two here, again, Command J. Duplicate that, hold Shift on the keyboard and now with your cursors, just left and right. Yeah, until you space it right. Okay, great. Next step that I want to do Basically go over here in my shape, in my layers palette and just take this layer one, which is obviously the line now. We can rename that quickly. Line, I'm going to make a duplicate of that. So command J, duplicate it. We're going to move that to the top. Then I'm going to duplicate this again. Command J until I have three lines. Command J again. And move that to the top. Actually take layer copy two, layer copy three and layer line copy. Just hold shift on the keyboard so it's equally going down. And now line copy one and just move that with the cursors up a little bit until you're happy with the spacing in between. Okay, and line copy three, just go all the way down. And somewhere over here, you can obviously space this a bit further until you're happy. You can also use some guidelines. Remember, I'm doing this quite quickly. Take a bit more time when you do this stuff. Now, last step that I still want to do is with M marking tool, rectangular marking tool. I'm going to make a nice big selection over here and trying to be equally spaced left and right with my text. Hit delete once, so that will delete one line copy. Delete and delete. Great. All of that out. I'm still going to go all the way up to the top and also delete that on our first original line. Great, like so. 
Now I'm going to press Command D, get out the selection, and also go to View, clear the guide, zoom out a little bit to get a feeling, and if I want to now, I can still space this a bit better. So first of all, again, line one, two, and three, and the two stars, no, not the stars, just retro badge over here, press Command G, put that all together in a group, okay, and that will be the bottom, okay, and then also the top, dip, dip, three stars, and line, Command G, again, Windows people, please use Control when I say Command. Great, all of that together, or maybe let's have a look quickly, the bottom, if I move that up a little bit, see, I've also got Vintage selected, which wasn't right, just bottom, okay, now I'm happy with it, Again, all three layers, Command G, put it together in a group, and we've got design finish. This is our design too now also. Okay, accept it, and again, I can move this down a little bit. I can press Command T in order to transform it a little bit, but just watch out that stuff doesn't get blurred too much. Great, so that's quickly how you can do this very simple logo in Photoshop. Yeah, so this is super simple guys, not an intense design, super, super simple like I said before. And again, if you are new, Practice this maybe again, and then head over to our channel and check out some more advanced tutorials as well. Yeah, so if you want the background, down below in the description, the shapes as well. If you like this tutorial, hit me up with a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Yes, and I'm still here, and if you want to see some more tutorials, you should check out on the right hand side, there are some really, really cool tutorials. Yep, I think this one, the top one, that's really great. Yep. I hope there's a good one in there though, but I'm sure there is, so just click away and if you're not subscribed yet, check down below, there's a subscribe button for you that you can hit and you will get weekly updates from all the tutorials that we do and free Tronics Design Media packages and more stuff. So anyways, guys, click away, catch you in the next tutorial.